this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mask making sessions. We are up to week number 211, would you believe? So for anyone who doesn't watch my channel, we are doing reruns. We are rerunning. We did the first 100 weeks. We reran them for another 100. And now we are doing a third lot of reruns. So we are rerunning week number 11, 111. We're now week 211. So what are we making today? We are making envelopes. Now, when I say envelopes, we are making the most basic pouch style envelopes for your junk journals. Um, so we're not making the conventional sort of um, envelopes with your punch board or anything like that. We are making um, what I would describe as pouch envelopes or a bit like a sort of clutch bag style envelope. Um, so what will you need if you're going to be crafting along? You're going to need a selection of papers. Now I've got a different select or I've got a couple of different selections of papers. So I've got papers here which are printed on thick paper. This is 230 GSM. So it's pretty sturdy paper. Now I've got a variety of double sided and I've got some that I have coffee dyed the backs of and I've got some that's white. I probably won't end up using the white. If I do, I will have to um, ink it or something on the inside. That's because I personally don't like to have white insides of my envelopes. So, you know, just a bit of a heads up, really, that if you're like me, don't like to see the whites on the inside, you're going to probably prefer either double sided papers or coffee dye the, you know, the underneath of your papers. So I've got thick paper. I've got um, thinner paper. Now, when I say thinner, this is not copy paper. This is 120 GSM, so it's thicker than copy paper, um, but it's not obviously as thick as the 230. Um, so I will be making a bunch from this. I've got some book page and I've got some sheet music. So we may kind of incorporate this um, with some of these. And again, you know, you could obviously use sheet music or, um, you know, book page to make your pouch envelopes. Um, you know, without any of the other, uh, you know, the patterned papers. Or you could use scrapbook paper. So the choice is yours. Any of those will be fine. Um, I think actually for these, you know, anything thicker, you know, is, is good. Um, and it will cut down on what you need to do to actually make your envelopes. Because obviously if you're using a sturdy paper, which is, you know, quite thick, you're not going to have to kind of line it on the inside, which is all going to take up extra time. So you're going to need papers. You're going to need some glue. Now I've got my Anita's Tacky Glue. This is my go-to glue for paper items. Um, so that's the glue that I'll be using. I've got a, what I would call a glue spreader. It's just an old, you know, card, like a store card or, you know, any of those kinds of things, a gift card. I've got a couple of dried out wet wipes that I can just use to smoosh the glue out or, you know, catch any excess glue. I've got my scissors. Um, again, you could use a bone folder if you wish. Um, I will probably use my scissor handles, but up to you really how you do it. If you like to use, um, you know, a tape measure, if you like to use a paper trimmer, obviously you could use all of that. That would be fine too. If you like to use a sewing machine, then you can use a sewing machine. Now, I'm not going to use a sewing machine because I like to try and keep these videos accessible for, you know, the majority of people. And I know not everybody has a sewing machine or not everybody likes to use their sewing machine with paper. Um, but I will, however, show you just how you would be stitching your envelopes if you were to use a sewing machine. Aside from that, you may want to have some distress ink or something to just ink around your um, pieces, your envelopes. And you may like to have something like a corner rounder or something to just, um, you know, round your corners of your envelopes, either the flaps or the entire envelope. So I've got a corner rounder there. You may like to have some decorative scissors, you know, decorative edge scissors if you wanted to have a decorative edge. You may want to have, um, if you've got a big shot machine or something like that, you know, one of those decorative edge, um, oh gosh, what are they called? Die, you know, die cut, um, you know, uh, dies. It's up to you really how you finish these off. Personally, I don't really kind of tend to do that an awful lot. I don't very often use my big shot anyway. Um, and to be honest, the majority of times that I use envelopes, I probably cover the edges, you know, the flap with maybe lace or something like that. So it's not really kind of something that I particularly do. But obviously this is, you know, your project, you do it sort of how you want to do it. 
Um, so that's kind of the basics that you're going to need. Then, of course, if you want to decorate them, you're going to need some bits to decorate. I will just decorate one at the end just to kind of demonstrate, you know, just one or two ideas. So how do we make these? So I will demonstrate um, one with thinner paper and one with the thicker paper, just to kind of, again, you know, give you a sort of overview of both, really. Um, so, yeah, let's get started making some. So... I've got, like I say, a variety of papers here. So let's just pick a paper. Okay, so I've got this one here, which is this gorgeous um, paper from my Victorian springtime uh, paper. So this is from my Victoria springtime kit. Now, obviously, this is kind of a sideways on paper, really. So it's up to you. You could either make this as a large envelope like this, or you could cut it down and then you'd be making two envelopes. I think I'm going to make this as a large envelope. Um, yeah, I think this is going to work really nicely as a large envelope. So all you're going to do, you know, up to you, this will be obviously the full height of a journal page. So this is an A4 sheet of paper. It's been printed borderless. If I use this piece in its entirety, it's going to be the full height of a journal page. I personally don't mind that. I think that's quite nice. Um, but obviously, you know, if that's not sort of how you'd like to, you know, to use yours, then you may want to kind of rethink and do something different. So then what you're going to do is obviously have this as your flap part. Now, what I'd like to do here, and excuse my jumper, by the way, I've got glue stuck all over my jumper. So very, very messy. So I just wanted to quickly point that out because it kept catching my eyes. Yep, it's been through the washing machine several times and the glue does not come off. Despite me picking it and things, it's still not coming off. Um, right, so what you're going to want to do is reinforce this. Now, this is where I'm saying that if you're using the thicker paper, it's, you know, going to save you a bit of time. If you are using thinner paper like this is, you may wish to reinforce. So I'm going to take some other paper. Now, I could use book page. So I could just reinforce with the book page. Let's see how that would look. Oh, that would look pretty. Yeah, I might use the book page because that's going to look gorgeous. Now, I don't mind that that's going to be sideways on. I think that's going to, you know, to work fine. So I'm just going to take my book page and just then tear it down like that again that's just a you know quick and easy way to get it cut down now i'm going to glue this down here that's going to reinforce my flap part and then i also am going to want to reinforce this part here just so i'm not kind of tearing the flap when i'm using it so i'm going to put this down here kind of underneath my what's going to be the flap and I'm just going to go round with my glue like this and the reason I've put it underneath is so as I sort of see roughly where I want to put my glue down to so like that plenty of glue and then just pop your piece of paper down onto oops onto there now, again, for me personally, I find it much easier to stick it down and then trim it around my paper rather than try and, you know, cut my piece of paper to size. I'm likely to, you know, completely muck that up. So for me personally, this is, you know, the method that I prefer. Obviously, if you prefer to cut your paper to size before gluing it on, then you may wish to do that. But for me, this is the easiest way. So I just then trim it up here. And then, you know, I've got no kind of issues of it not quite being the right size. It is the right size. Okay, so that's my envelope flap like that. Now, I'm just going to fold it in whilst this is still wet like that. Okay, so. Okay, so that's just my envelope flap. Now, like I say, I'm just going to reinforce this. Now, for this, you could either fold this over to reinforce it, which would be, you know, absolutely fine. If you don't want to lose some of your pattern, I mean, my, my patterned edge here it looks really pretty, you know, so I might not want to lose all of that. I'm just going to take my book page and just glue my 
book page down onto there and that's going to reinforce that there now the other thing that you could do is have a decorative piece here which we will probably do later on in the video so i'll kind of show you you know what i mean by that later on so again doing exactly the same method as i've done on the the envelope flat part is oops glue my glue my book page down so again lots of glue there all around like that okay and then just pop your paper down like that oops right up to the edge and then just again smoosh it out with your uh, glue spreader like that okay and then just snip this down again just trimming it at the side exactly as we did with the envelope flat part like that and then one here there we go and that's it and then it's up to you like i say if you are using your sewing machine You'd take this to your sewing machine and you would just stitch around here on these three sides. Okay, we're not going to use our sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my glue and just run it as close to the edge as I can. Like that. And then that bit there. Like that. And then just press that down. Okay, like that, and that's literally it. And then what you've got is this beautiful roomy envelope pouch. So obviously your flap here, and you know this is where, of course, you could use your decorative edge scissors here. You could use your, um, you know, your die uh, die cut piece or die um, thing with your big shot machine and things to make some sort of decorative edge or you know what I like to do as I say is put say lace down here I'm not saying this lace in particular but you know put lace on my flap and that sort of reinforces it and looks really pretty alternatively you know you know just for very simple kind of decorative steps you could just round your corners my corners are a little bit soggy from the glue so they're not rounding perfectly but i'll just now trim that up now i've got the template there like that so isn't that a gorgeous envelope now like i say this envelope is massive it would be a full height piece in a journal so you know you could have that either glued onto a page or you could just paper clip this in but i love the fact it's super roomy you could put something really nice and big in there so you know really really lovely so that's that one now i'm going to make one here just with the um you know the thicker paper just to kind of show you the difference so this here obviously um it's from my uh the pale damask I think but it could be the rich damask as you can see my print is not quite printed borderless so I'm just going to trim this down here I might have to tidy it up in a minute but again not going to get too too worried about that okay so going down as you can see I've printed the same paper on the inside and the outside so you know I think that's quite a sort of classy classy look really um, so again take your paper into roughly where you would like your envelope to be press that down like that obviously this is a little bit hard to see but you just want to leave a little gap I mean this is this is my um, favorite thing to do is leave a little space just so your envelope is very accessible to get your pieces in and out so there hopefully you can see our pieces here you've got a gap there I mean actually that gap's a little bit big but it's obviously where I couldn't really see probably because the papers are the same but you've then got a nice big um, space to be you know nice and accessible to get your pieces in and out so this one again you'd take to the sewing machine you'd stitch it on the three sides but obviously we don't need to do that we don't need to reinforce anywhere because this is a nice robust 
paper. So again, straight down the sides there with the glue. And then just pop that in like that. And then like that. So, I mean, they literally could not be any easier. And, you know, they're just such a lovely envelope, aren't they? I mean, I like all envelopes, to be honest, but I almost like these ones better than the conventional envelopes. Um, there's something really elegant about them. So this one, obviously, as you can see, my printer's not printed borderless again here. So just going to trim it up here. My printer doesn't really like printing on this very thick paper. I find when I first buy the printer, it's okay. And then the older it gets, the less it likes printing um, on the thicker paper. So as you can probably tell, it's it's getting a little bit older now. So it's now playing up more and more. So there we go. We've just rounded our corners like that. You could round other corners, you know, if you wanted to. But I think that looks absolutely gorgeous, just exactly like that. So that's that one. So, I mean, they really are very, very, very quick and easy to make. So let's pull in another one and let's do a paper where we've got sort of a slightly more directional um, pattern. And then we can do like two sort of smaller ones. So let's take, for example, here. This is my um, perfume background papers and this is in the lighter colourway. So I'm just going to again fold that like that. Now I find the best way to cut this down is then cut sort of in line with the fold and then you'll get a reasonably straight edge. You could of course tear it but then you're just going to have a slightly furry furry edge. So like that okay and then I'm just going to go in here. Now the other way that you could reinforce this just to quickly demonstrate is you could fold down here so remember I was saying that if you didn't have a pattern that you didn't want to lose. So for example here, you know, we've still got beautiful pattern there, you know, going right up to the edge. So then all you do is obviously glue this flap down. Like that. Okay. And that's it. That's reinforced that inside edge, you know, of the, the pouch part. So we can bring this up here like that, okay? And then again, we want to just line that. So again, we could line it with the same paper, which, I mean, there is something very, very gorgeous about that, isn't there? I'm just going to check that I want to do that and not mix it with something else. So I've got here some of my shabby chic collection papers. I thought they might have gone really nicely, but I'm not sure now. Uh, let me see what else I've got very quickly. Um, oh. The last couple of weeks I've been really good and had actually sort of sorted out papers first, which made it just a bit quicker and less boring for you guys having to watch me sort out the papers. But yeah, I didn't do that today, so I do apologise. So, but I do really like this paper here. So we could just use this in here. So again, I'm going to glue this in. Now, I don't need to worry so much here because, you know, I haven't got sort of a piece of paper that I've cut down. So I'm just going to run my glue, you know, roughly where I'm going to be gluing the paper to. Again, going all around, plenty of glue. Like that, okay. And then we'll just pop our piece of paper on here. Actually, it's probably better like that. Right. Pop that down like that. And then again, take your glue spreader. Whoops. Smoosh the glue out. Like that. Okay. And then you can obviously turn your paper over. Cut it round to the size of your flap. Like that. Um, Okay, and then here, like that, okay. And this goes up here. Again, 
fold your flap down, you know, again, leaving that slight space so it's just got that ease of access for when you're popping things into your, your pouch of your envelope. I mean, to be honest, when I first started making journals, I didn't used to do this and my flap would be folded down, you know, more or less flush with this. You can do that. Of course you can do that. Um, it's just kind of over time that I've thought, well, actually, it works much better to have a space. So, you know, personal preference, really. Um, so, yeah, just do it kind of as you, you know, as you find best, really. But, yeah, for me, I think definitely I like to have that little space. Again, I have probably made this space a little bit too big. Um, you know, to be honest, probably half that amount would be absolutely fine. Um, but it doesn't matter. You know, I personally would rather have a bit more space to be able to access that pouch and not have to have something that's less than the size of the pouch, if you see what I mean. Now, my piece can be poking up out of here slightly, which again, just makes it much easier to get it in and out of the of the flap itself. So again, we've glued it down. But again, obviously, if you were using your sewing machine, you'd stitch around the three edges. There's your little flap there. And obviously at this point, you know, you could obviously put um, Velcro dots, you could put magnets down there, you could put, um, what do you call those things, like a policy envelope closure and wrap around. You could put, you know, just a paper clip, for example, to hold your envelope, oops, your envelope closed when you're actually using it. I mean, to be honest, you know, they probably don't really need anything to hold them closed, but they're just absolutely lovely, aren't they? And so, so quick. So... Um, that's probably enough of the demonstrating. So all we're going to do now is just have, um, you know, a bit of fun, having a catch up, having a nice time, relaxing and doing some mass making. Um, and when we do the mass making for those people who don't watch long, we normally do it sort of assembly line style, which means that we're doing all the stages all together. So what I might do is just select a few papers that I'm going to make some envelopes with and then line them up you know if they're going to be lined i.e if they're the smaller uh if they're the thinner paper and then I've also got a bunch here of obviously thicker papers which don't need reinforcing which we can then obviously you know use like that so yeah I might make a big one with that Maybe I will use the, the rose paper inside there. Mm, not sure as that goes brilliantly, actually. I thought it would go... Well, that's okay, actually. Or, or I could have the... Mm, yeah, that's quite nice, actually. So perhaps I'll put those ones together. So this is my Valentine's paper. This is the Regency papers. And this is my rose collection papers. They're all from the collections papers. This is from my French blue, which I thought would be really nice. And maybe we'll put that with the, the roses collection. What do we think to that? I mean, it's very unexpected, isn't it? But I think it's quite nice. Um, yeah, we could even have it like that. Oh, this is why the last couple of weeks I thought I'd get ahead of the game and actually select my papers first because... Um, you know, it's probably not that much fun watching me select them, to be honest. But I just, yeah, ran out of time this morning and um, just didn't really kind of, yeah, didn't get time to actually select the papers first. So I do apologise. So, yeah, I've got those two. So that's the French, uh, the French Blue and the Roses collection. Uh, I've also got here some, got some of my Claridge's paper which, oh, I could put that just with the, actually, no, that's, uh, that might be from the Purple Rain. No, I think that is the Claridge's. This is from the Purple Rain papers. Um, hmm, I've got this from the perfume collection. Oh, you see, now I'm thinking I shouldn't have, shouldn't have bought along so many, because now I'm being, you know, a little bit dithery little bit dithery with selecting my coordinating papers right okay so should we do this one shall we do this 
Oh, let's do this. Isn't that gorgeous? That's the Claridge's and that's the light damask. So let's do those two together. Love that combination. Okay, right. Let's pick something to put with this perfume collection because that would be really lovely to have, wouldn't it? Um, so I did print off a lot of my documents collection, which again, that will just look gorgeous with that. Yep, love those. Um, okay, that will probably do from the thinner papers. So let's take some from our thicker papers, which these are brilliant because of course these are going to be much quicker to make because we don't need to reinforce them at all. And I will try and remember to tell you what papers I've used for all of these, even if I've, you know, currently forgotten to tell you as we go. So yeah, I will be, I will be mentioning as we go. So oops, let's just, yeah. Okay, right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Let me just check. Um, okay, right. Okay, so I've selected my papers and yeah, let's just do the reinforce it, uh, the, yeah, the reinforcing of the thinner papers first. So let's put those there. Now, do we want to have this one as a big or a small? So perfume collection and the documents collection this is. So yes, I do apologise. I will try and remember to tell you which papers that we're using. Okay, so I'm going to have to be folding these in and then reinforcing kind of like as we go really. So it's going to so what I'll do, I will do all the folding and the cutting and then we'll do all the gluing, you know, at the same time. So like that. And then I know which papers, you know, we're having with what. So pop that to one side. So this is my Claridge's and this is the Pale Damask. So I hope everybody's week has started out well. Um, for those people who watch my channel, you may know that I tend to film these videos on a Monday to go up for you guys on the Tuesday. So my week has only just started and um, yeah, it's started out okay. It's, it's okay weather, it's kind of nothing, nothing weather. <laughs> it's just nothing, you know, no big drama. It's it's not raining, it's not sunny, it's, it's not anything in particular, which to be honest, you know, that's probably preferable. We've had a lot of rain and things lately, so yeah, I'll take the, um, you know, quite harmless, harmless weather over the rain any day. Uh, might prefer, I'm actually thinking I'd probably prefer this with the documents, I think, than the blue. I thought the blue would be really stunning, but to be honest, feels a bit brave and sometimes you know when you go really brave like that then I I don't want to use them oh do you know let's be brave let's be brave sorry complete u-turn there but yes I must start just being a bit more adventurous okay right. now this one I'm going to just fold this edge in just to reinforce this if I haven't done that on the others I may um reinforce them you know with some book page or something like that this one's going to be reinforced like that. Okay, and then we'll just take the blue. Like that. There we go. So, yeah, what has everybody been up to? What have I been up to? Well, what have I been up to? <laughs> nothing much, that's for sure. Not a lot. Um, yeah, not a lot. I Obviously, I filmed my collaboration video. So if you haven't watched that, it was the collaboration put together by the lovely Rachel Bella Crafts. Um, I'm just going to have a quick sip of my tea. And the lovely Angela Kerr. And um, yes, I filmed that on Saturday. And I don't generally film videos on a Saturday. Um, but I filmed that one. And um, thank you so, so much to everyone who watched it and made comments. Oh, sorry about that. I just wanted to finish my tea so as I could get it off of the desk. Yes, thank you so much to everybody who watched the video and made comments. Um, I do really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, what a lovely collaboration. So um, it was uh, Angela Kerr and, and um, Rachel Bella Crofts. 
and they have got so many lovely ladies joining in and all sorts of um, channels, new and old. So, yep, lots of channels there that I hadn't heard of before. So a real good opportunity to, you know, find some new lovely ladies to watch and things like that. So if you haven't seen that, do check it out because you may really, you know, you may find some new things that you really would like to watch. So, yeah, very, very fun. Now for this one, what I might do is actually tear a piece of this off to have over here. So that then we've got a kind of follow through from the Regency paper there, if you see what I mean. So yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? I might trim this down when we come to um, glue it, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so anyway, lots and lots of wonderful new channels that I hadn't heard of. So, yeah, thank you so much to everybody who commented on my video. Um, had a brilliant, fun time doing it. And, yeah, thank you so much to Rachel for inviting me to join in. I really do appreciate that. So, yeah, thank you very much. Um, and thank you so much to everybody who told me that the lovely dog that was part of the kit, so it was using beautiful kits created by uh Rachel and from Angela Kerr and in one of the kits that you know I had used there was the most gorgeous dog um and yeah I happened to say oh what a gorgeous dog you know um and I didn't know what breed it was because I'm pretty rubbish with dog breeds and um yeah lots of people commented and they said it was in fact Angela Kerr's dog so yes thank you so much somebody had said it was a shih tzu um so yep we now know what dog it was and even whose dog it was uh but absolutely what a gorgeous 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 dog so yeah anyway so that's what i did on saturday afternoon and obviously if you watched my video you know i hate to be repeating myself but yes i had been on one of those lovely sausage walks down the beach in the morning so had a lovely lovely time at the weekend that was pretty much all I did for the weekend. Now, this unfortunately has gone very wonky in my printer as well. So it's not the best, <laughs> it's got to be said. Uh, I don't know whether we can disguise this somehow, you know, if I'm folding this up or whether it's just going to kind of highlight it further. But let's give it a try, shall we? So I'm going to fold it up like this. Oh, it's not, it's not great, is it? I'm going to fold it up, yeah, a bit more skew if which will hopefully, if I cut it right, we can straighten that pattern out. So I'm not sure whether this is going to work, but let's give it a try. So yeah, that was really fun. And um, oh, Bo had a lovely time. She just loves those sausage dog walks. They're kind of like her favourite, favourite thing. She loves the beach so much. And um, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's a bit easy to be lazy and not go, but yeah, she does really love them. So that was really fun. And then, like I say, I came home and did that video. Oh gosh, I'm making a bit of a bit of a meal meal pig pig's ear. Anyway, a bit of a meal of um, doing this. But I'm going to just take it down here. I'm going to have to tidy this up because I've not made a good job at all. So I'm going to have to take this flap down further here. This is all because this has not been printed straight on my printer. So I'm now kind of bodging it. Bodging it, trying to straighten it out, which is not really the best. So I need to kind of like get that in line with the fold. Let's see. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. Yeah better than I'd expected and then obviously I've got that where it's not printed borderless so this is where I really muck it up it's not too bad it's come out pretty straight so I'm quite quite impressed with that so that's the perfume collection with the um I think that is the rich damask but it could be the light damask I do apologize I can't remember quite so I won't bother doing this one um, now because obviously it was a bit of faffing to get it to go straight. And obviously that's pretty boring for you guys, so I won't do that again. So this one, should we do smaller ones with this one again? 
yeah let's do smaller ones so what i might do is um take this one in like this and then not press it too hard on this end cut it down the middle and i might do one in one way and one in the other way if that makes sense so let's just take that one down like that again i'll just fold that flap over I mean, I just love the simplicity of these, it's got to be said. So my son and I didn't go to the cinema last week. We normally do go to the cinema and then I'll report back, you know, to the film that we've watched. We didn't go to the cinema last week. Um, I don't think there was really anything on, to be honest. I don't, yeah, I don't think anything was kind of, you know, catching our eye. So we didn't go. Um, but I have been watching... Uh, my mum and dad had recommended a couple of things on on the telly so this is on channel five so again if you're not in the UK I think you can pick up things like this on that I don't know whether it's an app or, or what it is but the thing called Britbox I think you can get channel five on there um, so it's actually got a lot of different dramas on there now I love a TV drama so um, yeah it looks like I'm going to be busy for ages because they look like there are a lot of them on there so I've started out I've watched one called Love Rat so far um so these are all with an actress um who is here in the UK she is called Sally Lindsay she's very very pretty um yeah so she's a lovely actress to watch she's very pretty and very feminine and girly so she is in Love Rat um, and then I finished that. So I think that was four episodes. It was all about a um, kind of a swindler, you know, like, um, yeah, I don't want to tell you too much and kind of spoil it. But it was all about a swindler who she met on holiday and, um, yeah, obviously, you know, swindled her out of some money. It had some twists and turns which, you know, I love it when there's twists and turns in a drama. So that one was very good. Um, well, I mean, it wasn't very good, but it was it was quite good. It was very watchable. Uh, so that was that. And then I also have started watching another one with her. Um, this time called Cold Call. Cold Call. So again, it's about a sort of swindler. Um, but this time, you know, not a love interest or anything like that, but a sort of, oh, what would you call it? Like a, um, you know, an organised crime group, I guess, who, you know, go out of their way to obviously con people out of their money and things. So, yeah, I'm, I think I'm about an episode and a half into that. So quite enjoying that one as well. Um, she looks very different in that. I mean, you know, recognisable still, but yeah, she's not kind of very glammed up and things like that like she was in love rap where she was obviously on holiday and she looked beautiful in all her lovely holiday clothes and things like that um so yeah but she is in that as well and then there appear to be a lot of different things on there so yeah i think i'm going to be busy for ages so if you're struggling for anything to watch I'd recommend getting on to Channel 5 because that seems to be where it's at. Oh, I was going to turn this round and do some the other way up. But as you can see, I've printed that uh, the wrong way up, if you see what I mean. I folded it the wrong way up. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll have to go with it like this now. Otherwise, it's going to look really rubbish um so yeah anyway channel five is where it's at it's got loads of different things on there and um it's just really nice to be able to kind of like pick some stuff isn't it to watch so otherwise i just find sometimes you know i'm just flicking through endlessly <laughs> looking thinking what is there to watch and it's you know just yeah slim pickings i mean it's weird because when we were kids you know we had just I mean, well, I can remember there just being three channels. So when I was growing up, we here in the UK, we just had three channels. And then I can remember it being a really big deal because we then got a fourth one, which was called Channel 4. I don't know how old I would have been at that point, but um, I can remember it, you know, I can remember it coming out kind of thing. And it, it was very exciting, you know, to be going to get a fourth channel. Um, 
And yeah, to be honest, since then, you know, we've now, we've got channel five. Then obviously it went to like Freeview. Again, I don't know whether this is an international thing or whether this is just something we kind of got gradually here in the UK. But we got something called Freeview, which was then like multiple channels and they were free. Uh, I think you had to have a smart TV. Oh, I'm not sure, actually. I might be misquoting this. You might not have had to have a smart TV. You might have got all those different channels just with the digital upgrade thing. Anyway, um, the funny thing is, never had there seemed so little to watch. We'd gone from, you know, when I was a child with only three channels, to then four, to then five, to then suddenly about 35, and there was suddenly nothing to watch. And now, of course, this is the uh, Rich Damask Papers, and now, of course, you know, subscribe to things like Netflix and things like that. And actually, again, I still spend half my time then flicking through channels trying to find something to watch. You know, what is that about? I just don't understand how you've got more channels than ever and yet less stuff than ever to watch. I mean, that's just really odd, isn't it? Right, I'm going to take this one in this way. So, yeah, this is another one of those big envelopes. But I'm doing it flapping the other side, flapping, yeah, this way round. So it's the, the only one I've got that's this way round instead of the other. So, uh, yeah, I should have done a few more for a bit of difference. I'm going to trim this down because at the top, again, it's not really quite printed borderless. So there we go. But aren't they so quick? That, again, is the light perfume collection papers. Okay, and then I've just got this one here, which is, again, the Rich Damask. And again, I'm not sure whether this is the Rich Damask or the Pale. As you can see, for some reason, this has already been folded in. Oh, it's all blurred. Yeah, it's all blurred on there. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? So, hmm. Oh, I'm not sure now what to do. I don't really want to have it looking like that. It looks not very good. So I think what I might do is... Yeah, cut down this end here, which again, not borderless. Okay, and then we'll just cut it down. Yeah, I think we'll do it, we'll do it folding up this way, I think. And then we'll just cut it down to sort of the approximate size that we want, so. Like that. Oh, look, not borderless there either. Oh, isn't that annoying? Okay. So yeah, I'll just take that down. So I mean, you could even have like a really long skinny one. I haven't ever really done one like this size before or this this shape before, but I quite like that. Well, now I'm thinking I wouldn't mind doing another couple in that long sort of narrow shape. I think that's really nice to be honest. Very sort of elegant. And you could always do these tiny. So I've done all of these very big. But there's no reason why you couldn't do these much smaller. So, for example, here, I could just cut this edge off where I'd already folded it with that blurry section. And you could have that, for example, as like a little, you know, slim envelope, but with a, you know, um, what do you call it? Slim and tall. Slim and tall envelope. So, yeah, don't kind of be restricted to the shapes that you want to do that you have to do them you really can you know be quite experimental with your shapes so let's do a couple more in fact with the pieces that i've got left over so what have i got here oh, i've got another mm. oh right i'm gonna have to go back to these so yeah let's do one here doing again another sort of quite tall slim one so like that and then what we could do is tuck that in on its oh could we mm -hmm. tuck that in on itself like that okay and then fold that over and that's a really nice Nice, neat way to do that, isn't it? So, yeah, that would then be a tall, thin envelope as well. 
So yeah, all different ways to do these. So don't be kind of limited by what we've done here. You know, really experiment around because I'm sure that there's probably a lot of different things that you could do. Just check that I've got that the right way up. Okay, so if we have that there, um, again, want to bring this down because I'm hoping that I'm going to manage to do that again. This one I'm going to then reinforce here by again folding this piece in like that. So this is like just crafting on the fly because this idea only just kind of came to me. So again, that's reinforced there, and then this one tucks in there onto itself like that like that and that would be your little flap so again very very long skinny one so let's just snip that down here on the edge and this again is the regency papers so let's get gluing all of those um papers down so lots and lots of gluing here so we do all the reinforcing Like that and here. Okay. Like that. Ooh. Like that. Yeah, I'm loving those. I don't know why that had never really occurred to me before that we could actually make them all different, you know, shapes and sizes really. But yeah, it's only just kind of dawned on me now. But I do really like them. So let's just pop that bead of glue down the edge there, like that. Glue them down on the side, like that. And then fold this little flap down, like that there. Okay, and just smoosh that down, like that. So, I mean, that one's very, very long and thin. Again, you could obviously trim that down to make that narrower. So if I do that like that, and then I'll just need to re-glue here. Like, like that, okay. So very easily adjustable and, you know, change them around kind of as you need. But isn't that just such a cute envelope? Gorgeous. And to be honest, I've made them all as if they're going to be paper clipped into a journal uh, or as pockets themselves. These tiny ones are obviously perfect for being able to actually... Um, no, I haven't re reinforced this. So, yeah, all that talking just totally forgot that I hadn't reinforced this. So, oh, what did I do with my book page? Lost it now. Okay, let me just grab a piece of book page. Um, yeah, I hadn't really even thought of this, but these ones are perfect for obviously popping into pockets and things like that. So definitely, definitely, oops, I'm just grabbing some book page to reinforce this. Definitely, definitely, you can do all different shapes and sizes. Well... When I say shapes, you know, I mean like kind of tall, narrow ones or little ones or, you know, have you like really. So again, just going to put this down here kind of at the side. Oh, as it happens, that's pretty much going the entire way. So just pop that down there with some glue. Actually, if I do it this way. Okay. Like that. Okay. And then we can just again trim around here. And here like that. Okay. Oh, we had some really nice weather yesterday, I have to say. It was quite sunny um, and actually quite warm. If you got in the sun, it you know, it was pretty warm. So, yeah, I'm hoping that that means spring is on its way. It would be lovely. I have to say, Saturday was... Um, was it nice? I 
feel like it turned out not very nice. It it was quite nice on the sausage walk and then I think it ended up raining again in the afternoon. I might be wrong. I can't actually remember now. Oh, honestly, I'd lose, lose my head if it wasn't screwed on or forget my head if it wasn't screwed on. Right, so that's that envelope. And I can trim up these little bits once it's glued. So I'm just going to glue down here. Oops, just got a little bit there. And do that down there like that. Okie dokie. Had a lovely roast dinner yesterday. So that was really nice. Yeah, we, we've been doing that a little bit more often recently. Um, I know lots of people have a roast dinner as, on a Sunday, don't they? When we were kids, we used to always have a roast dinner on a Monday. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, really, but yeah, we used to have a roast dinner on a Monday. And, um, well, I do know why, actually. It's because, um, so when we were young, we used to um, live uh, in a place called Kingston. So it's on, like, the outskirts of London. And um, we used to come down to the south coast where my mum and dad had a caravan. And eventually they then bought a house here. Um, so we used to come down at weekends um and so Sundays obviously you know you couldn't really cook a roast because of course you know they were quite busy on the Sunday you know enjoying the last of our weekend and then driving back up back back to home so that's why we never had them on a Sunday and um I'm just going to go back to all of my thinner ones so that I can do all of the gluing of the paper before I do the you know the thicker ones so yeah let's just do these um so yeah well, anyway we used to um come down for the weekend and then obviously you know there wasn't then time to be cooking a roast dinner i mean yeah you couldn't really be cooking a roast dinner if then you were driving back and back in those days you know the road systems weren't quite as good as they are now so we there's a big sort of motorway now and um it cuts out a lot of the journey but back when we used to do that I mean it would really take kind of a couple of hours to you know to get down so um yeah there wasn't time I guess to be having a roast dinner so subsequently we always just had it on a Monday and um so I've never really kind of got that whole having a roast on a Sunday thing um because you know it just wasn't really something that we did when we were children and you know I think you do do what you've always done don't you so yeah we've never really had roast dinners on a Sunday particularly but obviously I know that loads of people you know they love having a roast on a Sunday don't they so anyway a couple of times recently we have had a roast on a Sunday and I know that I said last week on Mother's Day my son had cooked us a roast which was absolutely lovely and um what was this uh-huh uh so yeah anyway we had a lovely roast last week cooked by my son and um shall i just go in here because i'm now thinking i'm gonna come unstuck here because yeah i haven't made provision and got some book page so oh well we'll just take this in um so yeah we had a lovely roast dinner last sunday and then we had another one yesterday and it's just really nice to be honest you know it's quite a nice way to um spend the day you know when you're not really going out kind of you know you don't want to spend any money or anything like that so it's actually quite a nice way to spend the day isn't it i mean we used to go out doing lovely walks all the time i have to be honest we've become very lazy we never ever do long walks or anything like that so um yeah we're pretty pretty lazy when it comes to the whole walking and stuff but you know maybe we'll get back into it we should get back into it to be honest i i quite miss it actually I used to really like going for our nice walks and things <sighs> like all these things you know life changes and then you just stop doing what you kind of were doing okay right so that one's a bit shorter now this one's got a very long flap here um which actually i'm quite liking you know again another different sort of look so once we've glued this down 
you know we'd have an envelope with a long flap and you know maybe that would be quite nice as a different look so you really can you know mix and match and do these however you like obviously if you didn't like or you know if we don't like that long flap we can always trim that down in a minute but for the moment I think I'll just keep it with that long flap and see whether I'm still liking it you know when I come to decorate it up because yeah I think it's nice to have some different things going on isn't it so yeah quite nice Quite nice, I think. Let me know what you think. Do you like the long flap? Do you do you prefer the tiny ones that you pop into pockets? Do you prefer these bigger ones that we're going to make as like say the pocket pieces themselves? You know, which way do you like to do them best? Do you you know do you prefer the small ones or the big ones? So again, this one I'm just going to I think fold this fold this in. Actually, I'm not going to. I think what I might do with this is we might put a little strip of this down on here so let's do that now uh, yeah so i'm going to just tear this down so i did do this on the um week 111 so yeah the rerun version but i hadn't done this on the original if you see what i mean but isn't this really nice so we've reinforced this edge or we're going to reinforce it when I've glued this down, by having this paper stuck on the outer edge, which is quite a nice way to obviously coordinate or bring in this coordinated paper that we've got on the inside of the flap. So it's just a sort of bit of a different look to, you know, having this plain. So we just glue this down here like that. Again, just smoosh the glue out like that okay and then here we can just pop this down in there so this time I'll just put the glue onto this sheet of paper so no hard and fast rules you know like you can see I'm now kind of gluing direct onto this piece of paper which is the first time I've done it this way around. So um, yeah, just kind of, you know, do it as it comes. So I'm just going to glue that down like that and then just pop that down there like that. Okay, then smoosh that glue out. Like that. Okay, and then Pop that up. So then here, we're just going to glue this side down. Actually, I'm just going to run a bit of glue, you know, a bit further in because I'm probably going to cut that down a bit because I just have that little bit where it didn't print borderless. So again, smoosh that glue like that. Okay. And then fold your flap over again just leaving that small space like that okie dokie and we'll just trim this down slightly here on the top like that oh dear not made a very neat job of this oh my goodness getting worse worse as we speak <laughs> like that now I've just got a bit of a fairy edge here because that was a torn torn off edge so yeah I mean you could tidy that up I'm not actually going to bother because when I finish this off and decorate it I'll probably put lace down here so then it won't really show anyway so that's those okay right I'm just going to very quickly then glue a couple of the um you know these solid ones because they'll be really quick to do so as you can see you know if you've got thicker paper like this that doesn't need reinforcing this is the quick way to you know to get them done so you know if you've got the thin paper and you need to reinforce it you just need to allow a little bit more time for that having said that you might want to make a mixture anyway because I think they are different you know different looks and different styles but definitely 
you're looking for speed, thick paper is the way to go because look at how quickly these are just being thrown together. Could not come together any quicker, could they? Just brilliant. Okay, and yep, let's do a couple of our big ones as well. So this one. So this one has been just coffee dyed on the inside. So also, you know, you don't have to double side them if you've got plain white on the inside you could just coffee dye them i mean you could just ink them up to be honest i mean who knows maybe you don't mind them being just plain white anyway it's all you know personal choice but i personally probably don't like the you know the white inside so for me i think i prefer them you know either coffee dyed or double-sided but you know that's no no hard and fast rules going on here. There we go, like that. Okay. So looking good, looking good, looking good. Uh, we'll just do one more, I think. Let's do one of these. Oh, let's do this tiny one, shall we? The little tiny one that we did. Just again, just to demonstrate how this looks so, so that you can see all the different sort of appearances that you can have. So, yeah, straight down there. I mean, obviously, this one's, you know, quite tall and narrow. So you're going to need something, you know, pretty tiny and narrow to put into your envelope. But don't forget, here more than ever, actually, is essential. You've got this space here. You see this little space, which means whatever you put in this pocket doesn't have to be smaller than the pocket. It could actually poke out slightly more which just is going to make it much easier for getting things in and out of the pocket. So, you know, that's just a little thing that I've kind of probably learned over the years to, to do is just leave that space. So let's decorate one of these up and I will have to finish the others off, you know, in slow time because I think we're going to run out of time otherwise. So I'll just put those to one side. So which one shall we decorate up? I've brought along a few things for decorating. Um, let's just see what I've got here. So I've bought some of my French papers and my um, Victorian London. Let's use the Victorian London, I think. Yeah, let's use these. I wonder if we could use these with the with that perfume paper. That might be quite nice, might it? So right, let's move these out of the way. So we're just going to decorate this one up here. So this is Victorian London collection so I'll just take this here so because this is the full height of a page like I said before I would probably paper clip this in another way that I would use this is if I were doing a ring bound journal I would maybe use this as like a page so I'd put holes in here so as you can obviously still get to the flap nice and easily but holes in here and have it like a page so that's another way to use these really giant ones. So I think they're really great to have, you know, a bunch ready made in your stash. You know, because then essentially you've got a ready made page for a ring bound journal, which is you know, always good. Always good if you can have some ready made things. So we can decorate the back here like that. Looks really pretty, doesn't it? I might just rough this up a little bit. like that okay oh gosh I've torn that now again I mean it doesn't really matter because you know it's all kind of um going to look quite sort of shabby chic when it's finished anyway hopefully so just ink around there okay oops that's quite nice, isn't it? Now I'm just going to hold that down for a minute. That. Uh, now, do we want to have anything? Just wondering if we wanted to have sort of any... Mm, got these labels. These are from the Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. So, yeah. Let's just put these down. Okay. 
in one of these lovely black labels. Like oh, do you know, I've just had an idea of going with black for this. I was fully intending on going with, um, you know, ivory and making this really pretty and sort of, yeah, shabby chic. But now I'm thinking maybe we should just black, you know, black this up with some black lace. What do you think? I haven't really done anything with black lace for a long time, so I feel like it's high time I did, if I'm honest. Yeah, perhaps I ought to do a um, journal sort of with some black lace and things pretty soon because it's been a long time oh my goodness oh my goodness doesn't that look gorgeous ah love 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 how that looks so let me just cut this out now do we want to have more lace or just kind of just there is that sort of enough i mean that probably is enough isn't it i was going to say did we need to you know have the lace all around this. I actually think that's too much, to be honest. So yeah, I think we're going to put this down like that. Now, just going to roughly glue this lace down like that, okay? Like that, okay. Looking good. And then, yeah, this, we could then have as like a pocket on here, which, you know, is always good, isn't it? To um, have like pockets. So let's just check that's glued down. Right. Might have to just have a little bit more glue on here only because if we're having this as a pocket, if the um, lace beneath is not really glued down, when you put things in and out of the pocket, it's just going to get caught on the lace if it's kind of moving about at all. So yeah i think kind of you know tuck it in a bit further now i did have that lovely sheet music i don't know whether that would look weird on here but let's just have a look and see because i'm thinking now that we've done black on here maybe we should just have a bit of sheet music coming out behind here i don't know how it's going to look but let's just have a look it may look rubbish, it may look good, we'll see. Ooh, I'm not sure that's looking good if I'm truthful. Let's just take this down. Uh, what do we think? Maybe on that side. What about if we had it like that? I know that label's upside down, but... Yeah, what do we think like that? Yeah, it all kind of adds to it, doesn't it? So again, just glue this down. Not going to worry that it's a bit, you know, a bit tatty. It might even be bigger than the envelope, but I don't mind that. I think it's all, you know, it's all going to kind of add to the, the interest, isn't it? So we just pop that down like that. This is going to go here and then the label yeah, just going over there. So this, I might just hot glue this down. Just on three sides there. So that's a pocket. So like that. Okay. Oh, I'm loving how that looks. Yeah, very, very, very nice. And then we've got this lovely label. Oh gosh, I'm determined to put that label on upside down, aren't I? So, yep, I need to watch that I don't. So, should we have that there? Now, do we want to have that on lace? Probably not, but let's just see. You know, because this might be just a bit too, a bit too much lace going on. see oh no <laughs> you can never have enough lace as it turns out yep the more the better like that okay mm, loving that absolutely loving how that looks okay now down here i'm just thinking 
one of my little ribbon embellishments so i do have these um ribbon embellishments in my um shop on my website at the moment so yeah they're they're ribbon packs so they've got a whole bunch of different things in the ribbon packs but yeah they may have some of these oh my goodness <gasps> i'm loving that so much now which one do we really love oh that one or the black i think it has to be the black it's looking really gorgeous isn't it yeah okay so yeah Pop the black black ribbon just down there actually i'm going to do that in a moment so i'm just going to turn it over and decorate just this side now as well because once i've obviously put that down it's it's going to make this wobbly if that makes sense so let's just check on here check if we want any of this anywhere i'm thinking maybe another image from here just to tie the you know the back and the front in so oh maybe that hadn't really intended on tearing that but yeah before i knew it i was just <laughs> i was just doing it oh right Oh, that's very lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Do we want to tear the top down as well? Did I ink this? Did I ink it? Yeah, I did. I couldn't remember. It's like, hmm, bit of a total blank there. Right, let's just go around there. Right, let's just knock this up. So I'm thinking like that let's just check this out i'm thinking some black lace across here definitely oh my goodness oh my goodness doesn't that look lovely honestly it's ages since i've used black lace and now i'm like why have i not used black lace recently i forget how much i love it so much yeah it's one of my favorite things to use and why have i not used it recently I don't know. Yeah, I'm now seeing a very black lacy journal in my sights soon. Must remember that because, um, yeah, really do love the drama, the drama of the black lace. It just looks so gorgeous, doesn't it? And <gasps> really like striking and gorgeous yeah i just love it right so if we have that like that and then i'm thinking across here let's just take this down so just cut this down here so probably want to cut this down size wise because it's pretty pretty thick do we want to yeah so let's just oops, take it down like that. Okay. Oh gosh. There we go. Like that. Oh my goodness, isn't that lovely? So let's put that lace down so it stops moving. Okie dokie. Make sure I'm putting this the right way up. I think that's the right way up. Let's hope it is. Too late now. It's glued down. So, yeah, too late if it's not. Right. Now, let's glue this down here, which will obviously hold that in place like that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got this horrible feeling that i've gone over massively today time wise but we've been having such a lot of fun been loving hanging out and um yeah the time's just whizzed by today so i'm so sorry it's, uh, just just run over by accident because um yeah was just having such a lovely time with you guys so i hope that you don't mind right let's take another black label so let's take this shaped one so oh, a bit more fiddly to cut out but and 
and perhaps we'll also take one of these just yeah can never have enough labels can you just take that and okay right Oh, let's hold it down with that because I'm still using my scissors. What was I doing that for? Right. Okay. Bit more fiddly, this one. My eyesight's becoming so bad that, yeah, I'm struggling to actually see properly to be able to cut this out accurately. But it's not really helping in here because I'm filming with the light on. And the light does kind of cause a shadow over the, what you're cutting. So, but obviously I've got the light on because I'm filming. But yeah, it just makes it a bit more difficult to see what you're actually cutting or where you're, where you're actually cutting. Right. Let's put this down like this. They're quite nice like that, aren't they? Oh, I'm thinking a couple of brads in there would be pretty nice. So I've just got some brads here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's just pop a hole in here. Okay. So these are those lovely brads that the lovely Michelle sent me. And I've got two different sizes. So I've got these smaller ones and the bigger ones. So I'm just using the slightly smaller ones in this, which are perfect size. Oh my goodness, come on. So I've folded my stems of my brads in like that. So rather than like in opposing directions, they're both facing the same way. Because otherwise I haven't really got anywhere, to, you know, for the stems to go. Okay, there's one. Oops, let's put the other hole in. So, yep, oh my goodness. Come on. Right. Okay. Oh, come on. Mm. Right, there we go. Oh, come on. It's not bending around very easily, but anyway, there we go. Like that, I'm really liking how those look. So, yeah. Right. Uh, now, not sure whether I might prefer this down here. And then, actually, I'm thinking maybe one of my lace clusters. So let me just see if I've got any black lace clusters. Hold on a second. Right, so I've had a quick look around. So I've got my lace clusters and I've also got this ribbon cluster or ribbon, rib, blah, 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 ribbon piece. Um, I think I prefer the ribbon. So let me show you the two. So that's the lace cluster. That's the ribbon piece. So again, I have got these for sale in my shop on my website. So I've got the lace clusters and I've also got this is also included in that ribbon um, pack. So yeah, I think that looks cute on there. So let's just pop this one down here like that okay oh my goodness doesn't that look gorgeous 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 and then we can just have this here or even I don't know I do like this one down here so let's just pop this one down again can just pop it down with the hot glue like that That's so pretty, isn't it? Okay. And then this label. Let me just check that we don't want this label somewhere on the back. Where were we having this? Were we having that there? Mm. Oh, I don't know now. Let's just check. Probably on here, maybe maybe tucked in there. Okay, so yeah, let's just quickly pop this one down. 
and it probably didn't even really need another one but I'd cut it out now so let's just use it so yeah let's pop that there and then this gorgeous ribbon piece we'll just put down there so this is quite um you know fancy now and obviously we've got quite a few lumpy bits on this um so definitely for me personally you know I would probably use this you know clipped in now to a ring bound journal um because you can be much more um you know they're much more forgiving oh that's just not quite glued down properly there so I'm just going to go in and glue that uh they're much more forgiving when it comes to bulky pieces so you know because I've got bulk now on the front with this and on the back with this you know that's how I would use this so you know if you are making them to just go in you know a regular journal I would probably have limited my bulk to just one side or the other I wouldn't have had bulk on both sides um but obviously I got a little bit carried away with the decorating and just couldn't quite help myself and they've ended up you know bulk on both sides but yeah, I mean, I think it was worth it because it looks very, very, very pretty. I just had to just glue these down here a little bit more because obviously I hadn't clipped them together or anything. Again, if I wasn't filming, I would have stitched these probably, in which case they'd have been held fast, you know, held well. So let's just see how many we've done. I feel like, um, you know, we've done quite a few. I do have obviously some left to finish, but we finished. Um, so I, you know, glued together one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This one obviously is completely complete. I, you know, ready to go in a journal. Plus I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven left to complete so I mean that was a pretty productive hour I mean I'm pretty sure I've run over but hopefully not by too too much so we've had a productive time here today so yeah I really hope that you're feeling inspired um you know hope that um you have fun if you decide to make some of these and thank you so much for watching I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up um have fun with your junk journal envelopes and yeah I will see you guys in the next video thanks so much then Bye.